I was enjoying that cake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Toast Crumbs by Karen Wassenaar Gotti. Location, porch. I listen for a loud clack from the back door of my grandpa's house. I'm rewarded with a resounding slam because I've left open the front parlor window. It makes this amazing air vacuum so grandpa's screen door bangs hard to a close. And open, and another close. Don't slam the door, he yells at me, thinking I've just come inside. We've now comfortably deposited ourselves in plastic chairs on the front porch. It's raining this morning, and it's the kind of rain shower which brings fat worms slithering onto the cement sidewalk. I'll be picking them up later. Where does rain come from? I ask him. He looks stiffly at me and tells me it's God crying. So I ask him, was it something I've done? You slammed the damn door, is his answer. <laughs> You'll usually sit here, feeding peanuts to squirrels or rolling cigarettes. He's always got his old police scanner at his feet, turned on and tuned in to the station he once worked for. I ask him why he likes it here on the porch killing time. He just shrugs. The scanner buzzes to life, broadcasting some new emergency. At least someone is up to no good. I decide to go pick worms. Location. Swing. We walk down to the park at the end of our streets because it has stopped raining. I like to swing and kick sand. I kick sand to see just how far I can make it spray. It disperses and fans out like pigeon feet from clenched fists. Grandpa gives me pushes on the swing, but never those underdogs. He's, he tells me he's too old to run under my butt. His hands are meaty, intimidating even, taking up the whole small space of my back. I hope my hands will mature one day and get large, like his. He nicknames them War Hands. I bet Grandpa could hold a lot of bird seed, but in his day, he used them for throwing grenades and later wielding a billy club. I hope there's still some fight left in him. I check on him mid-swing while arching my back and stretching out my legs. I spot him upside down on my upswing taking a drag off one of his newly rolled cigarettes. This morning, on the porch, he let me lick the rolling papers to seal the tobacco. He looks a bit distracted, or lost. I find myself drifting backwards into a fog of his exhaled smoke. I guess he used to do this kind of thing with my dad, but since the porch police scanner made its big announcement, it's now just the two of us. I could be wrong about him being lost. Maybe he's trying to remember my dad and grandma as they drove away together. I'm swinging to forget. Location. Table. I wonder about a grown man who's got a lace cloth on his kitchen table. It traps toast crumbs and I really hate cleaning the damn things. War hands seem out their elements, stroking and smoothing a big lace doily. They look so bony and it looks too delicate to withstand such a touch. He says his wife liked lace and he loved her. So the doily cloth stays. By noon, he's seated at the table, working on his crossword puzzle while I go over my homework. Steam from his hot tea distracts me, and more cigarette smoke hypnotically twirls before disappearing towards the ceiling. If he does speak to me, it's while I'm sharpening our lead pencils, telling me to get the lead out. Alphabet letters become confining crossword squares like crumbs get trapped in lace. Somehow we all get stuck in a rut. I stare down at my grandma's cloth and set myself to task pecking away at the imprisoned toast crumbs and fresh pencil shavings ensnared within its ornamental weave. 
I have a memory of her kissing my dad on the cheek as he'd breeze into this house and me and her for every Sunday lunch. The aroma of roasted turkey permeated the house, teasing my senses with all her hard work. This makes me consider closing the front parlor window once in a while to stop giving God a reason to cry. I think she'd like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.